So our next speaker, slightly out of order, is um, Will Robbins, who's a VP of Silicon at Mindspeed. I think um, Will's going to be slightly off the wall. I think that's there. And uh, talk about what happens when Silicon fails. As Mike says, um, I'm Will Robbins. I'm the VP of Silicon at Mindspeed in the UK, which was formerly Pikachu. On the Pikachu website some time ago, it said of me, he has consistently produced right first time silicon on highly complex devices. This is no longer true. <laughs> I've suffered from, from silicon failure. Um, it's horrible. It's stomach churning and it's very expensive. So I ask him, so which of you has not put a bug on silicon? So, you are very, very lucky people. So what I think we want to do today is together we want to keep you lucky. Um, so you know, we need to talk about when silicon fails. We all need to talk about silicon bugs because we don't talk about it. I want to go and explain why it is you know, that we need to talk about it. I want to explain why these bugs evade all the verification that we've talked about this morning and actually end on silicon. And then I want to talk about some real bugs. But my mission today is to get you to talk about silicon failure, to talk about silicon bugs. Okay, so pre-silicon verification, it's only a means to an end. It's not an end in itself, sorry. But the, the end point here is working silicon. Now, and so you know, the only way to judge your verification is, does the silicon work? So in some ways, the only way to learn about verification is to learn about when the silicon fails, when you get bugs. That's the only way you're going to inform how your verification was, how it was good. But the problem is, the problem I'm trying to confront here is that, that talking about silicon bugs, it's unfashionable. In fact, it's bordering on the taboo. You know, it's like, you just don't mention it. You can shuffle and come through if you want, but just do. Okay, it's right. So boldly, I'd like to propose there are only two reasons why why silicon fails, why we get bugs on silicon. So the first of these, number one, is the ASIC model fails. And number two, you haven't verified the feature. Um, I know saying this seems a very sort of simplistic proposition, but if you take it the other way around and say, okay, so you have verified the feature fully, and the ASIC model holds, it's going to work on silicon. So, okay, so... Let's look at the, uh, the first of these, the ASIC model failing. So by the ASIC model, what I mean is, so you're running a zero delay RTL simulation in your verification, and by that you have a, a good assumption that it's going to work on the silicon. Okay, that's the ASIC model. And this is, this is a vast abstraction. So we're going from some high-level RTL down to you know, nasty things like wires and transistors, inductors, all that stuff. This is like a vast abstraction that, that we live upon. And I think from this, it's, it's obviously both impossible and desirable, um, and undesirable to, to model everything. So we've got to consider what we need to model in, in for this abstraction to hold. You know, subtraction or balancing on the top of. So, so for instance, well, this power supply that you've got there, this power supply is bouncing all over the place, it's like waves going across the chip. Um, how much do you need to consider that in all the different parts of the chip for this ASIC model to hold? Um, that black box you use in your verification, maybe it's a black box for, I don't know, some analog part, um, you know, a DLL or PLL. How much functionality is actually modeled there? Is it the right amount of functionality? Is it got all the features verified in um, it? hasn't got all, everything in there, but has it got enough? Um, you know, you, your clock crossings, have they been dealt with correctly? Because they haven't, the ASIC model is going to fail. I think the, the crucial point here is that 
you've got to make some engineering judgment about what to model and what not to model. And if you get this wrong, the ASIC model is going to fail, and your silicon could fail. Okay, so the second reason for silicon failure is the feature not being verified. So this looks at best like well, a bit of lack of coverage. But at worst, it, this looks negligent. It's like, you didn't verify the feature. Well, I think if you can sort of think of it in what do we fully verify that's anything bigger than about a NAND gate? You know, do, I'm expecting to get shot here, but hey. Um, do we fully verify a multiplier? It's like, well, no, we don't. It's impossible to fully verify the system. So, as you know, you are using your skill to choose scenarios which are you know, a subset of real life. And it's up to you to choose those scenarios correctly. So, again, we're down to its engineering judgment to pick the right scenarios. And if you don't pick those right scenarios, the silicon can fail. Okay, so hopefully we've now, we've now established that it's impossible to verify everything and it's impossible to model everything. But real life is everything. So you know, we've got a problem here. And what we need is we need engineering judgment so we can decide what is important and what's not important. Right, so we've got some good news and some bad news here. The good news we've established is that there's only two reasons why your chip's going to fail. The bad news is both of those are down to engineering judgments. There's no green lights here. Well, I think that as an industry, we have a... We like green lights. We like to say, well, we've got 100% coverage, all tests passing, um, no DRC errors, no, no timing violations. There's, you know, there's great comfort in this. But what we're talking about here, we're talking about judgments. So we have a amber light, which is not, you know, not what we want. Okay, so I banged on about these, these judgments. So if they're so important, how are we going to get better at them? Oh, we need to talk about when these judgments are wrong, when we get bugs on silicon, you know, when it fails. As I said, you know, my mission today is to make us talk about when we have these problems, when it fails, when we get bugs. So, in mercifully, about 10 minutes' time, when you're standing there with your piece of quiche and your, your cheese on a stick, maybe with a pineapple on the bottom of it, talk to the person next to you and say, what was the last bug you put on silicon? And what did you learn from it? Well, I'll try it. But I think there's, a, there's obviously a big issue when you say, look, confidentiality. You, you, you can't grasp up your company like this. So I've been collecting sort of silicon failure stories. That's an interest. <laughs> you don't answer, I completely know it. You need to get out more, Will. Right. Yeah. So I've been collecting these things. I've been collecting them on my blog, of which you'll have a plug later, so don't worry. And once you actually sort of collect together various stories of, of, of silicon failure, you realize that if you strip away the company name, you know, if, you, if you take away the application, if you sort of take away the IP vendor's name, there's still nuggets of value. So, so confidentiality need, need, make us, you know, need, need not stop us talking about this stuff. And I think you know, we need to talk about it. Okay, so enough, um, enough philosophizing. Um, we should do four quick bugs before lunch, before your blood sugar gets too low. Okay. Um, I can tell you think there's a risk here, isn't there, really, for me, that um, you're going to go, he's put all these bugs. This man is a complete numpty. So can I point out at this point, I'm a contributor to these stories. I'm also a collector of them. So they're not all mine, okay? Before, you know, before you write me off completely, or maybe it's too late, who knows? Okay, so all of these are taken from um, when, silica, uh, when silicon fails .com. Okay, right. So this is, this is one of the 
we had, we had two classes. This is when, when the, um, the ASIC model um, breaks. So got an SOC um, that we're verifying, all going very nicely. Then when we turn the voltage down, we find out it stops booting. Okay, so problems. So after lots of investigation, what we find is that the, the clock going out to the flash, as we take the voltage down, the pulse when it narrows really quite rapidly over a small voltage window and then fat lines. But all the pre-silicon verification worked, all the SDA passed. So what's going on here? You'll understand here that I'm, I'm condensing two or three weeks of angst and panic into 45 seconds for your entertainment. Okay? So what was found was that really fast clock was passing around the pad ring and going through the longest delay cell anywhere on the chip. So we found an anomaly here. Some sort of, we've got some kind of smoking gun. So later on, when we take this delay cell and actually spice it and take, so we're, we're off the ASIC model already, we take this pulse at low voltages through this delay cell, it effectively just filters it out. It just doesn't go through. So this delay cell now is not performing like its model. The ASIC model is broken, the silicon is broken. Okay, so we should have a lessons learned from this. Um, lessons learned from this one is well, be care, very careful with delay cells and ban the dangerous ones. Okay, this one is, this bug is snappily called um, don't saw the branch on which, uh, don't saw off the branch on which you're sitting. So put it another way, don't take away a resource on which you're relying, even temporarily. So the requirement here was that the processor controls the speed of the DDR clock. Unfortunately, in this design, changing the speed of the clock actually meant you had to reset a DLL, you had to stop the clock and then restart it again. You can probably see this one coming. <laughs> so I just want to just go straight for it now. Okay, so, the processor reads code from the, uh, the SD RAM to stop the clock. The SD RAM is stopped. It then goes to read code from the SD RAM to, okay. Now, I think you can look at this and you go, this is, this is, this is foolish and simplistic. Intelligent people put this on silicon, okay? So these problems happen and I think we just need to think, oh, why didn't that happen to us? So, I think, so, so the lessons learned for this is, well, first I think, Easily, perhaps, you've got to say, you've got to tie, we've got a requirement here, and we need to tie the verification more tightly to the requirement. Another thing is, perhaps your DLL or your PLL model needs to model things more. So you can't just change the speed in RTL. You know, you, you find this problem. Okay, so these are just examples. So you can look, there's nuggets. There's many more stories that I hope you'll contribute confidentially, but then there's things that we can all learn from. Okay, so here we're looking at a significant block of, of a wireless file. So what this block does, it passes an input stream, it demultiplexes it, um, and then collects, this demul uh, collects up this demultiplex data, and then pushes it out to resources in, in an SDRAM. And all this was, was verified at this, this big block level. What we found when we had silicon, was occasionally you see these, these resources running out when they really shouldn't have done. This is happening after, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes of, of real-time run. What we, we found out was that a FIFO, deep in the design, when it was very occasionally um, full and pushed and popped simultaneously, it lost data. Okay. Again, I can see your simplicity. Where was your coverage? But you know, it made it on silicon. I think from here, well, what the lesson you'd learn from here is, well, you had a very big block. So to actually try to decide to have the right scenarios at that level was very difficult. You weren't able to exercise the code further in. You needed to have unit test um, on the FIFO. I know this is obvious to you. I'm not a verification engineer. I just have to live with consequences. Okay, last bug, um, another not verified bug. And this is, I like this one because it's, sort of, it's counterintuitive. 
So the performance of this processor was crippled by having large caches, not by having small caches. Okay, so SNC is looking, um, showing very good um, performance in, I don't know, dry stones, MIPS, LM bench, pick what you want. And this was in the pre silicon verification and um, in the initial validation, looking very good. However, as soon as you get above maybe I don't know, five processes running on the processor, the performance starts to plummet. Again, so weeks of angst, etc. What we discovered was that every time we had a context switch, the whole cache is purged. So every dirty line is written back. And because we have big caches rather than small caches, we have lots and lots of dirty lines. So the memory controller is deluged by, by writes, lots and lots of consecutive writes. Unfortunately, what we took as our scenario, bearing in mind we're not going to run the whole OS, I think it was taken 100 days, as was stated earlier, was that the, the scenario we chose was reads, because I think as everybody knows, as Hennessy and Patterson would say, you know, read latency is, is what perform is all about performance. Forget about the rights, they just happen behind your back. So we didn't pick that scenario. And basically, we didn't get the performance we were looking for. So I think the, the lesson I think we'd learn from this one is, well, we picked the wrong scenario. We didn't understand the application enough. We didn't understand what the OS was doing in detail. Okay, okay so in conclusion, it's the silicon functionality that matters. The pre-silicon verification, it's only a means to an end. The silicon fails for only two reasons, but the problem is that both of these are a result of difficult engineering judgments. We've got no green light. So if we want to learn about verification, if we want to learn about these, these, um, these judgments, we have to look, about, look to the silicon bugs we have to go and talk about silicon failure, and then together we'll stay lucky. Okay, thank you. Thank you.